The Kano state government has resolved to partner with Nigerian journalists to tackle the phenomenon of hate speeches in many radio stations across the state. Governor Abdullahi Ganduje said although the Nigerian media is doing well in the areas of objectivity and balanced reporting, there is a need for journalists to check the disturbing trend. Journalists from all the states of the Federation, including Abuja, have been meeting in Kano, the state capital, to discuss how the advanced professionalism will take shape in the sector. Our correspondent in Kano State, Idris Jibrin, reports. It was a welcoming atmosphere, with the governor happy to receive members of the Nigeria Union of Journalists. The conference got on the way shortly afterwards in the government house coronation hall. The journalist brainstormed on the dangers of hate speech, its impact on the socio-political developments of Nigeria and Africa, and how to find a lasting solution to the problem, particularly with regards to political party groups in the country. While freedom of speech is guaranteed by the Nigerian constitution, the issue has been notably brought to fore with the recent developments in the polity with the various regional groups clamoring geopolitical interest in Asabic words, particularly through the use of social media platforms, which has inevitably exerted momentous pressure on the fabric that holds the nation together. Issue of hate speech, which only polarizes and divides and undermines the social cohesion of humanity, I must say is of utmost concern for all humanity. Most of the participants condemned hate speeches in the media and asked the NUJ and other stakeholders to be resilient and uncompromising in ensuring objective and professional journalism practice in the country. A lot of unpeachable things that circulate in the cyberspace and through the social media will be checked by the strict enforcement of the Cyber Crime Act of 2015. As we make progress towards the next bout of elections, the incidences of hate speeches and the fake news may begin to increase. Conference over. The journalists went on an inspection of some of the developmental projects of Governor Ganduji. Elsewhere in the state, mass media scholars and veteran practitioners converged on Vaira University Kano to discuss how the media reports corruption and other related political crimes. The former Vice Chancellor of the United Nations University in Turkey, Professor Sisu Black, weighs in on the issue. And let me hasten to point out that ideology and ethical issues, values, are inextricably linked. I conclude with a proposal on actionable recommendations for a successful pedagogy and praxis of investigative journalism. This was the second in a series of lectures by Bayra University. The main takeaway this year is that media professionals should accord priority to investigative journalism as a tool to fight in corruption in the country. Idris Jubrin, Channels Television News. Under the current constitutional dispensation, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has the sole right to fix dates for general elections in the country. This is the view of senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, on the controversial record, reordering of elections scheduled by the Senate. Mr. Falano told Channels Television that the amendment made by the legislature in the 2010 section of the Electoral Act to the effect that the National Assembly would have the last say on elections is illegal. For me, it is the height of legislative absurdity to stipulate that the constitution of a country, which is the ground norm, will be read subject to an act of parliament. It's the other way around. But since then, I mean, since that alteration was made, all the cases that have gone to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court have been resolved in favor of the powers of INEC to fix dates for elections in Nigeria. And that remains the law. In other words, the purported am amendment or the insertion of the phrase in accordance with the Electoral Act has not donated the powers 
to fix election dates. I've not conferred the National Assembly with the power to fix election dates. As part of efforts to see through the vision of making a number of states a tourist centre, Governor Willie Obiano has inaugurated a committee to direct the affairs of the Golden Tulip Hotel. The inauguration, which took place at Amobia in Anambra State, has the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Charles Soludo, as the chairman of the board, alongside eight others in the hospitality industry. The board is also expected to see to the effective takeoff of the hotel next month. Gathered at the governor's lodge in Amobia, a number of state, is the state governor, Willie Obiano, and appointees of the nine-member board committee for the Golden Tulip Hotel in Agulu town. Again, I have... These personalities have been selected by Governor Obiano based on their records in the hospitality industry as well as business enterprise to direct the affairs of the hotel and grow it to a world-class standard. In a 14-point term of reference, the governor expresses optimism that they will bring their wealth of experience to bear in its administration. Among other things that I trust you with, you know, to have the direct, to direct the affairs of the hotel consistent with the joint venture agreement between Anambra State Government and the Golden Tulip, ensure full and effective takeoff of the hotel, and quickly build the hotel to capacity. Uh, of price level, uh, grow the hotel to a world class standard, and ensure the hotel is run in a financially prudent, viable manner, guided by the fiduciary responsibilities of hotels as uh, provided in the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and a number of states. So I'm confident that uh, uh, in less than six months we'll be able to turn this profit, and uh, we'll not look forward to the government for. Members of the committee commend the governor for his genuine commitment towards achieving the vision of making the state a leading investment and recreational tourist center. Um, it may have started out um, as just one of those projects, but in my view, we can create with this project the leading hotel, the leading resort in eastern Nigeria. Um, your vision for the state, of course, is, is for it to be the leading investment destination. Um, I think that that's laudable and that we should continue with that. But I think that if we add to that, that it should also be the leading recreation zone for Eastern Nigeria. And, 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 and the two go together. You work hard, you play hard. With assurances from the board that the state will get its maximum return on investment, the state government is hopeful that the board will hit the ground running and meet its expectations. The Department of Petroleum Resources, the DPR, is moving around states in Nigeria to curb unwholesome practices among oil marketers. While some still sell above the official 145 naira per litre pump price, others resort to hoarding on the dispensing and other shop practices. In this report, we look at the activities of the DPR in some parts of the country. Like an elephant in the room, feel scarcity lingers in Nigeria. And in spite of actions taken by relevant stakeholders, this infamous giant appears immovable. In Imo State, Southeast Nigeria, the Department of Petroleum Resources DPR sealed seven fueling stations that were allegedly hoarding, under dispensing and selling above regulated pump price. The price range is between 185 and 200 naira per liter, and users who have been at the receiving end lament. Well, since December last year, so we have been buying for 250 naira. By this time, we are buying 179 naira. As they go along to carry out their legitimate business of, you know, making petroleum products available to the populace, they must do that with the government regulations that guide this business in mind. For instance, the PMS will sell for 145. The price has not been changed. It has not been deregulated. 
when you know you cannot sell for 145 you'd better stop you better don't buy because the dpr will not look the other way while the public is ripped off the southwest is not exempt from this problem in akure the ondo state capital a long queue besieges an NMPC retail station, one of the few places users can get petrol at the approved pump price. The DPR proffers a solution. The mandate is that marketers, irrespective of where you buy, you must sell at the government regulated price. The cap is 145 Naira per litre of PFS. Plateau State is also having its fair share, as three stations are sealed and others forced to sell at the regulated price. The fuel crisis is lingering longer than Nigerians desire, and finding a one-time solution will definitely bring relief across the country. It's time for business news on the News at 10 with Anne Waldo. Thanks a lot, Gimba, and welcome to Business News. A total of 55.5 billion naira has been disbursed to over 250,000 farmers under the Anchor Borrowers Program in partnership with the state government and private sector groups since the commencement of the program. And that's according to the central bank governor, Godwin Emefile. At an event in Ondo State, he explained that 300,000 hectares of farmland have already been used to cultivate agri-produce under the program. The Anchor Borrowers Program was launched by President Mohamed Buhari on November the 17th, 2015, to provide tools, training and funds to farmers at single-digit interest rates and link farmers with credible off-takers and processors. In the meantime, the CBN has continued its intervention at the interbank forex market, targeting the retail secondary market intervention sales with a sum of $321.4 million. Figures obtained from the financial regulator indicate that the amount released was for requests in agricultural, airlines, petroleum products, raw materials and machinery sectors. But earlier in the week, the CBN injected $210 million in various segments of the forex market to help meet demands by end users. Let's see how the Nigerian Stock Exchange fared this week. It ended the third week of February down by 0.16% following the impact of profit taken by investors, which of course dragged the all share index by 1.53% on Monday. But the market managed to gain 1.38% from the marginal recoveries recorded within the four trading sessions of the week, putting the equities capitalization at 15.2 trillion Naira. A total of 2.01 billion shares worth 21.74 billion Naira were traded this week in 25,496 transactions. The banking and insurance sector indices finished in the green while the oil and gas, consumer goods and the industrial goods sectors ended the week negative. Total Nigeria is reporting a lower revenue of 288.06 billion Naira for its full year financial performance for 2017. The oil marketing giant also recorded lower earnings per share of 23.62 a pre-tax profit of 11.79 billion Naira and profit after tax of 8.01 billion Naira. The company has proposed a financial dividend of 14 Naira per share for the year ended 31st of December 2017. And that's business news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawado. It's back to you again. Bye. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles coach Gennett Raw rules out bringing in new players to strengthen his squad for the 2018 World Cup in Russia. That's the sports news. Stay with us.